programming brought to you by AWI Networks, Smarter Internet. Thanks for joining St. George News at 8. I'm Scott Beadle. Cedar City Police arrested a couple this weekend after they allegedly kidnapped and assaulted a woman who they say owed them money. According to court documents, police were first alerted to the situation two weeks ago when the alleged victim was being treated for injuries. She told them she had been kidnapped and attacked by a couple but was unable to give many details. When police followed up several days later, she then told them she feared for her life. She described a scheme to buy drugs that had turned violent when she had second thoughts. That led officers to arrest James and Deanna Hansen. They're now facing charges for kidnapping, assaults, and possession of heroin. A 56-year-old woman was jailed, suspected of driving drunk and crashing through the front of a local business. This afternoon, just prior to uh, 3 p.m., officers from the St. George Police Department responded to 144 West Brigham Road in the Bloomington Courtyard on a personal injury accident report. Reports that a green Ford F-150 had crashed into the side of the building and that the truck had gone all the way inside the building. We found here we found a 56 year of age female driver that had indeed crashed into the front of the building and that at least uh, one uh, gentleman was injured as a result of the collision with the building. I was just sitting upstairs above the office at my dad's office and we were just sitting around talking and all of a sudden it just felt like an earthquake. It just, everything rumbled. We heard the car screeching and we ran down and there the car was through the window. It's our building. We were just having a meeting upstairs and it sounded like a bomb went off. It uh, was a huge boom. We ran outside. It was a cloud of uh, dust and uh, this car must have flown into this at, you know, super fast. So I just parked my car right over here because I work in the complex on the other side of the building. And uh, right as I hit the sidewalk, I hear the squealing of tires at an extreme rate of speed. And then I hear an engine rev extremely loudly, getting extremely close. So right as I'm turning around, the, the truck that's currently in this building, at full gas, just right in front of me, about four feet, connects with the building. And at that point, I'm just thinking, what did I just witness? The driver was field tested uh, on scene. Uh, we performed a standardized field sobriety test on the driver. And uh, that portion of this investigation is still currently under investigation. Police have identified that suspect as 56-year-old Jill Upwall. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is weighing in on a case before the U.S. Supreme Court. That case centers on Jack Phillips, a baker from Colorado, who declined to make a wedding cake for a same-sex couple back in 2012. The couple filed a complaint with Colorado's Civil Rights Division, which ruled against Phillips, as did the Colorado Court of Appeals. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has joined a number of other religious groups in filing a Friend of the Court brief in support of Phillips. The highest court will have to determine whether Phillips illegally discriminated against the couple or was lawfully exercising freedom of speech and religious beliefs. The school year has just begun, but one Washington st State school has already been rocked by a shooting. One student is dead while three others are hospitalized, but should recover. Ariel Reshef has that story. Terrifying moments inside Freeman High School as a gunman opened fire. We have one more victim in the classroom. A fourth victim in an upstairs classroom. The mass shooting just south of Spokane, Washington. Authorities confirming one student was killed. Three others rushed to the hospital, all expected to survive. The shooter may be on the second level. Suspect in his team, 57160 glasses. The alleged shooter now in custody. Authorities responding to the high school around 10 a.m. local time after reports of an active shooter. He was carrying a duffel bag. I think the color was black. And he was just, he set it down and pulled it out and just started shooting. Students sheltering in place. Law enforcement going room to room and floor to floor, combing the school for the gunman. A student walked up to him, engaged him, and that student was shot. That student did not survive. He then fired more rounds down the hallway, striking three more students. Worried parents rushing to the scene, reuniting with children amid panic and disbelief. 
Chief Meteorologist Chris Summers has your Southern Utah forecast right after this. The weather tonight is brought to you by AWI Networks, smarter internet. And a good Wednesday evening. Welcome back, everyone. Temperatures warm once again here in southern Utah. Late this afternoon, 96 degrees, our high temperature here in St. George. Normal high for the date, 93. Overnight lows into the upper 60s. Our normal overnight lows should be in the mid-60s or so. But the warm weather is going to take a break for a few days as we have some cooler weather and a little bit wetter weather making its way back into our area. Some showers and thunderstorms back in the forecast here the next couple of days. Satellite and radar again doesn't show much going on around St. George or southern Utah. I'm having seen a few clouds and rain showers down to our south. You can see a little more moisture coming into parts of Arizona. That's increased in moisture we're expecting to see here in the next couple of days. And that means an increase in rain chances for our area as well. That also will put a hold on some of those 90 degree temperatures. And looks like most of us will probably get back into the mid 80s. And by the weekend, I wouldn't be surprised to see temperatures in the low 80s here in southern Utah. So definitely some much better, nicer weather in the forecast. But a little rain to go through here in the next couple of days before that nice weather gets here to stay for a couple of days this weekend. Take a look at what else we can expect to see. Then a few sun, a few showers and thunderstorms around as we head through your Thursday. Could see a little mix of clouds and sun too. Should get the thunderstorm chances out of here by Friday. Then very pleasant temperatures are back in the forecast as high as Friday afternoon, probably low to mid 80s in much of southern Utah. And looks like that beautiful sunshine will last into the weekend too before we do start to warm back up early next week and could be looking at temperatures once again next week back in the mid to upper 90s in some areas. But here's like our highs from today. 97 in Las Vegas. 81 degrees a high in Cedar City, 83 Enterprise, 96 here in St. George, and 96 degrees a high temperature in Mesquite. So your southern Utah forecast for your Thursday. Again, seeing a little bit of rain in our area, about a 40 to 50 percent chance of some showers and thunderstorms moving through. And with the extra clouds and the rain, we should keep temperatures back in the low to mid 70s around Cedar City, then low to mid 80s from St. George and Hurricane to maybe the upper upper 80s to near 90 in Mesquite for Thursday afternoon. All because of a low pressure system is going to really track right over top of St. George as we head into the afternoon hours of tomorrow. So around that low pressure area, seeing some of those showers and thunderstorms. That's also going to bring in a little bit cooler air too, bring that in all right off the Pacific Ocean. And with that cooler weather, should see some drier weather and also cooler weather in the forecast as we get closer to the weekend. Before your Thursday, low to mid 70s around Cedar City, Newcastle and Enterprise about 74. Again, a shower or thunderstorm possible in the area. Also keeping a chance of rain in our forecast for St. George and Southern Utah, 85. The high temperature in St. George, 89 degrees, a high temperature in Mesquite for our Thursday. Another chance of some rain for Friday around Cedar City, your seven day forecast, low 70s. And as we get to the weekend, looking very nice for Cedar City, partly to mostly sunny skies and then eventually a little bit warmer as we get into early next week. We'll keep the mid 70s around Saturday, Sunday, but then by early next week, could get back into the mid 80s for one day on Tuesday in Cedar City. Now for St. George and Southern Utah, yeah, temperature is looking pretty good as we get into the weekend. Beautiful weather out there, 85 the high temperature Saturday, 86 by Sunday. A little bit warmer next week could jump up in the upper 90s on Tuesday for maybe one day before we cool right back off into the low 80s by Wednesday of next week. So if you take a seven day forecast and take that Tuesday out of there, actually looking pretty good across our area. A little nice rain. Of 80s yeah, a little rain in the area for Thursday, but really the temperature wise this weekend looking very nice uh, here in southern Utah. All right. Thanks, Chris. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Drivers who use Bluff Street north of St. George Boulevard are going to be seeing some changes. Here's a look at the proposed plans. To prepare for future growth, UDOT and the City of St. George have designed a safer, more efficient Bluff Street along West Black Ridge. Here's what's happening. First, rather than waiting at a stoplight, drivers on St. George Boulevard will have a free right turn lane that gets them directly onto Bluff Street without any lights, speeding up the flow of traffic. Second, UDOT will widen Bluff Street along West Black Ridge, adding extra lanes for vehicles and creating more space for bicycles. On the north end of the ridge, Bluff Street intersects with Sunset Boulevard, a crowded intersection. Currently, this intersection directs the flow of traffic to the north. Left-turning cars have to wait for the green arrow to get onto Sunset Boulevard, creating long lines of vehicles in the left-hand turn lane. UDOT's improved design will direct the flow of traffic to the west, where it turns into Sunset Boulevard. This means instead of waiting in the left-hand turn lane, you simply follow the main flow of traffic around the ridge. Only vehicles in the outside lane will continue north on Bluff Street. 
While making these improvements, UDOT will add a pedestrian tunnel at Bluff Street and Sunset Boulevard where people can cross safely. Computer models predict that these simple enhancements will improve the commute along Bluff Street for decades to come. Nice little presentation there. Yeah, I like that. Thanks for watching. We hope you have a great night.